Number 56. Joseph Priestley prepared oxygen in 1774 by heating red mercury 2 oxide with sunlight focused through a lens. How much heat is required to decompose exactly one mole of red HGO solid to HG liquid and O2 gas under standard conditions? Okie dokie. So the first thing that we have to do here is since this is coming from a text, right? They're not going to give you the delta H values that you're working with. So I went into the back of the textbook to find out the delta H values or the heat values that correlate with these three substances. So I put them down over here. Next, just know that for any delta H values or the heat values, if you have a single element or diatomics, your delta H's are always going to be zero. Only for basically compounds do you have an actual delta H value. The second thing that we have to do is we have to write a balanced equation talking about what's actually going on here. We're decomposing HGO to HG and O2. So we know how to do a, an equation, right? So let's, let's just get to it. So I'm decomposing. That means that I'm starting with the HGO. And I guess I'll put a solid, right? And this is going to break down into the two components. They told me, right? HG, liquid, and O2 gas. Now, I just have to make sure that I'm balancing correctly. They did specifically say that I wanted one mole of this. So this has to stay constant. I'm going to manipulate these two numbers, uh, the, you know, these coefficients, to fit that I need one of these. So... The HG looks good, right? I have one HG and there's only one here, so that's good. So maybe I'll just put a one here. But now here's the thing, guys. I have one o oxygen here. I need to keep it one mole because they told me that. So what times two will get me to one, right? This is the only case in which we're allowed to have fractions when we're dealing with delta H values. So I need a half of the O2, right? A half times two, the twos cancel out and I'm left with one. So now we're balanced. Okay. Now let's bring in the delta H formula, right? What's the delta H formula? How do I find a delta H for a reaction? It's this formula right here. Now it may look a little scary. Have no fear though. It's basically just simplified into two things. All we have to do to find a delta H for a overall reaction is to get the sum of all the delta H of the products, and remember the products is the right side, and subtract it with the sum of all of the delta H's on the reactant side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this a little bit down just so that we can tabulate what's going on here. I'm going to write down the numbers for each individual uh, component here. So for HGO, the delta H for that is a negative 90.83. So I'm going to just write that. And maybe I'll say that since this is a reactant, I'll put it in blue. Negative 90.83. Now, I wouldn't really worry about the units. Just know that at the end of the day, if you're using your tables or this these normal numbers, the unit for delta H is kilojoules per mole. And now for mercury, this is just zero. So I'm just going to leave it as a zero, and so for the O2 as well. Now the next step is technically you would multiply each number by how many you have in the coefficient. The only one that's not a one, oop, what happened there? The only one that's not a one is the O2, right? I have a half here. So I'm just going to show you guys that technically you should times this by a half, but I mean timesing by a half is just uh, zero. So I'll just rewrite them again. So this is still zero, and this is now negative 90.93, uh, it's 0.83. And now we're ready to group them all together. Sorry that I keep pulling this down. But now you just keep your sides together as one number. So now I'm going to add these two together, technically. So zero plus zero is just zero. And this is the same number, so negative 90.83. And now you're ready to finally do the formula. It's just the product number minus the reactant number. 
So the delta H for the reaction would be the products, which was zero, minus, and then the reactant was a negative 90.83. If we just do the math, and if I just move this over a little bit over here, right, zero minus a, a negative number, you keep change, change, right? So my delta H for the reaction would be 90.83, and this would be kilojoules per mole. Now, since they said that we're still using exactly one mole of HGO, right, and this, uh, basically this formula is saying that for every 90.83 kilojoules will be produced under one mole of either one of these. So in this case, we can kind of just drop the mole. So my answer, basically, if I just put it up here, the delta H or the heat that would be required uh, would be, maybe I'll just put, I'll just put the number here. It would be 90.8. Eight, three kilojoules. That's it. You don't have to put the moles because you're saying that we already have one mole. All right. So that's it. 90.83 kilojoules. That's how much heat is required. And there you go. Hopefully this helps. Let me know in the comments. Give this video a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you want to. All right. If not, that's okay too. Um, I will see you in future lessons and I hope you guys have a great day. See you later. Bye-bye.